Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is our uh, lecture number fifth from the series of basic econometric codes. So in the previous lecture, we discussed the uh, concept of classical linear regression model and assumptions of uh, classical linear regression model in some detail. So in this lecture, we will cover a precision and standard error of least care estimates. So uh, in the second, uh, we will cover uh, features of variances and standard error of uh, beta 1 and beta 2 data, the estimated values of uh, beta 1 and beta 2. Uh, in the third, we will explain Gauss-Markov theorem and what is the application of Gauss-Markov theorem and what is the meaning of Gauss-Markov theorem. Uh, in the last, uh, we will explain the coefficient of determination that is R square and uh, capital R square. So uh, that is a measure of goodness of the fit. So let's start from the precision or standard error of least care estimates. Before going to explain the reliability of the estimate, we consider a model uh, that is our basic econometric model. So that is yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus mu t. So this is our basic econometric model. So uh, our concern is that we have to find the values of beta 1 and beta 2. So or we consider an example like we have data, data values of x and values of y. So x is uh, in this example x is a uh, independent variable and y is dependent variable. So uh, we will check the uh, impact of x values on y. This is our uh, basic model. So uh, by how we check the values of uh, the, the relationship between uh, X and Y by uh, the two uh, methods or two uh, uh, formulas uh, in the previous lecture we already discussed that is uh, beta 1 estimated is equal to Y bar minus beta 2 X bar and beta 2 is equal to N summation X Y minus summation X summation y over n summation x square minus summation x whole square. So these are formulas we discussed in the previous lectures. So if you look at the uh, schedule, so suppose this is uh, x value 2, 4, 6, and 10. And these are y values, suppose 10, 20, 30, and 40. So our main concern is to find out the values of uh, beta 1 and beta 2. And by uh, calculating the values of beta and beta 2, we have to uh, check the relationship between uh, x and y, either it is positive or negative. So that, that will be explained by the estimated values. Suppose uh, after calculating the values, after applying the formula and calculating the, uh, completing the formula, uh, and uh, over suppose estimated values are like suppose uh, beta 1 is equal to 5 and beta 2 or uh, the value of beta 2 uh, is equal to 0.2 suppose 0.2 that is xt so this is our estimated uh, equation in the previous le uh, lecture we already discussed uh, the formula uh, b b uh, beta 1 beta 2 formulas so so our uh, concern is that uh, what is the reliability of beta 1, beta 2? So how uh, we can check the precision and reliable estimates? So uh, this is basically uh, checked by the standard errors. So in the statistics, the precision of an estimate is measured by the standard error. If your standard error is minimum, then uh, we can your your estimate is reliable or uh, precise estimate. So if you look at the uh, formulas of uh, uh, variances and standard error, so the formula of variance of beta 2 estimated is equal to sigma square over summation x i square. So this is the formula of variance of beta 2. Uh, and then suppose we have to check the value of standard error 
of beta 2 estimated standard error basically is under root of the variance so we can write it like sigma over summation x i square under root so this is standard error of beta 2 uh, uh, the formula of variance of beta 1 estimated is equal to summation x i square over n summation x i scale into sigma scale. This is the formula of variance of beta 1. So uh, standard error of beta 1, it would be under root summation x i scale over n into summation small x i scale into sigma. So this is a formula of standard error of beta one. So if you uh, check the relationship between uh, sigma scale and uh, and the variance of beta two, so uh, that is directly proportional to the sigma scale and inversely proportional to the x i scale. So if the value of uh, x i is increasing, then uh, definitely the variance of and standard error of beta uh, 2 will be decreased or uh, that that would be minimum and over concern is the minimum standard error. So in the in all uh, formulas, all the values of uh, x i or uh, and that already uh, can be calculated by the formula, but only value of sigma scale uh that that estimated sigma scale that we can ex we can uh derive from the this from this formula summation u i scale over n minus two so uh how would calculate the uh, value of summation u i scale uh, as i said before suppose uh, we calculate the value of estimated so the formula of uh, ui is equal to y estimated uh, y minus y minus estimated y hat it means so your actual value minus estimated value so difference between actual and estimated that is equal to error so uh, so after calculating the value of estimated equation then we put the values of x one by one like suppose we have estimated value is equal to 0.5 plus that is value of beta 1 and uh, that is 0.2 xt. So we put the value of suppose 1 by 1 that is equal to 2. So y hat is equal to 0.5 plus 0.2 into 2. So what will be the y hat we can put it here. So we can create a column by hat then we can create a column for ui that is equal to y minus y hat. So by this way, we can calculate the values of ui. So after calculating the value of ui, we can simply scale uh, of that column. Then after then we add up the column and we can put it here. So you by this way, you can find the value of sigma scale. So n minus 2 what is n minus 2 n minus 2 basically is a degree of freedom so uh, the term a uh, number of degree of freedom means that total number of observation in the sample so that is equal to n less than less the number of independent linear constraints or restrictions put on them it means uh, in this example uh, we have two parameters so uh, so over degree degree of freedom is equal to minus 2 if we have uh, greater than two parameters, like three parameters or four parameters, then our degree of freedom will be changed by n minus three or n minus four. That depends on the uh, number of constraints or the number of independents. So all these, uh, in this scenario, we can check the precision or uh, reliability of the estimates. So, hmm. 
Next, we can uh, explain the standard error. Standard error of UI, uh, sorry, a uh, sigma. So we can see that is sigma square or th that is variance, simple variance that we already put in the variance of beta 1, beta 2. So what is the standard error of uh, uh, this? Variance so that is equal to sigma estimated or mm, under root summation u i square estimated value over n minus two. That is the standard error of estimate or the standard error of the regression that is equal to S E. It is simply the standard deviation of the y values above the estimated regression line. And it is often used as a summary measure of goodness of the fit of the estimated regression line. So uh, by this, we can calculate the value of standard error and we can interpret uh, the standard error by uh, by this way. So now uh, we start from the features of the variances uh, and therefore the standard error of beta 1 and beta 2 estimated. So as I said before, uh, the formula of uh, variance beta 2 and standard error of beta 2, variance of beta 1 and standard error of beta 1. If you look at the uh, formula of variance of beta 2, uh, that is uh, directly proportional to the sigma square and inversely proportional to the summation xi square. So that is given sigma square, the larger the variation, variation in x values, uh, the smaller will be the beta 2 estimated. If you increase the x values, then uh, our beta 2 uh, will be small. So hence, the uh, greater the precision uh, with, with which beta 2 can be estimated. It means uh, uh, that is uh, directly proportional to the sigma square and inversely proportional to the xi square. So if you uh, variation in xi, xi square increases, variation in x values increases, then that, that will uh, impact on the variance of beta 2 if variance of beta 2 is less and if you uh, take the square root of the beta 2 variance of beta 2 that definitely it will be a uh, low value and that will be preferable uh, to over estimates and then that leads to a reliable estimate. Secondly, uh, the variation or variance of beta 1 estimated is directly proportional to the sigma square and uh, sigma square and xi square so uh, if you look at the variance of beta 2 uh, beta 1 so that is directly proportional to the xi square and sigma square and inversely proportional to the deviated xi square and number of observation that is equal to n if uh, a number of observation increases and uh, uh, x values uh, increases then that definitely that impact on the variance of uh, uh, beta 1 and uh, that would be uh, less and uh, after uh, taking the other root of the beta uh, beta 1 standard error that would be uh, that would be less so uh, that is in our uh, reliable estimate so since beta 2 uh, estimated and beta 1 estimated are estimators. They will not only vary from sample to sample, but in a given sample, they are likely to be dependent on each other. So this dependent being uh, measured by covariance between them. It means uh, these beta 1, beta 2 not only depend on each other, but also uh, they have covariance. So they are uh, depending on each other as well as and uh, they they can be measured that that dependence can be measured by the covariance. Our next point is properties of least square estimators, the Gauss Markov theorem. So the Gauss Mark the basic concept of the Gauss Markov theorem is uh, our estimator must be blue. That must be blue. B stands for best linear unbiased 
estimator. So overestimator must be linear, a linear function of a random variable such as a dependent variable y in the regression model. So uh, after uh, uh, calculating the values of beta 1 estimated and beta 2 estimated and overall over uh, the properties of the estimators that must be blue or they are linear, they are unbiased. So it means the expected value of expected value of beta 2 is equal to actual value of beta 2 or true value of beta 2. So if uh, expected value is equal to actual value, then uh, our uh, error term is equal to zero. So third property is uh, the minimum variance. So it has minimum variance in class of all such linear unbiased estimators. An unbiased estimator which leads uh, with the least variance is known as the efficient. So uh, our third property is our estimator have minimum variance. If the estimator have minimum variance, so uh, that is, uh, or even though it's unbiased, so yeah, the, the property of uh, the, the the estimator is unbiased and have minimum variance that must be efficient. So over estimators will be efficient if it has a property. So if by combining all the properties like uh, a minimum variance, uh, like unbiasedness, linear estimate, and have minimum variance, so that are below. That is actually uh, the the concept of gauss markov theorem so gauss markov theorem uh, is uh, show the properties of uh, least care estimates now finally we come toward the last topic last point the coefficient of determination it is equal to r square a measure of goodness of the fit so the coefficient of determination r square in case of two variable if we have two variables then we can write it in small r square if we have uh, multiple regression, more than two variables and dependent variables, then we can write is capital R scale, that is coefficient of determination. How much variation in your dependent variable due to all explanatory variable. So it's a summary uh, measure that tells how well the sample regression line fit the data. So if you look at the diagram, so in the diagram, we can see uh, this is our total variation and uh, uh, this is our variation due to residuals and this is variation this variation is due to uh, a regression so we can if we have a sample regression model beta 1 and beta 2 estimated then we can write it uh, like this way so uh, before uh, going to con uh, deep concept in the regression uh, coefficient of regression or uh, sorry coefficient determination so we can uh, explain it by uh, the one diagram Suppose we have two variables like y and x. So that is y and that is x. So this is a diagram. So in this uh, case, uh, this is just disjoint set and uh, they are not uh, correlated. They don't have any correlation or they don't have any relation. So in this case, over the value of uh, uh, r square is equal to zero because this is uh, disjoint set or they they are not associated with each other. So in a B diagram, we can check this is pi and this is x. So they are, these two variables are associated. They have light association. So this is B diagram. If you look at the third diagram, y then is equal to x. So this is C diagram. So it has more association. So a variation in y uh, explained by the uh, variation in x. So in the D diagram, we can check this is y, this is x so our variation is like this so in e diagram we have more over by independent variable explain dependent variable 
like this. So this is our E diagram. This is our, uh, sorry, this is our D diagram. This is our E diagram. So in the last, we can see in this case, Y is equal to X. So this is whole shady diagram. So if you look at this one, uh, these diagrams that show the association between X and Y. When there's no overlap, R scale is obviously zero. So in this case, we don't have so much association between the variables X and Y. So that's why there's no overlapping. So obviously, R scale, the value of R scale is equal to zero. But in this case, we have complete overlap. So in this case, the value of R scale is equal to one. Since 100% the variation in dependent variable due to all explanatory variables is 100%, so that's why it's uh, R scale is equal to one. So uh, we can uh, write it, we can say that uh, the value of R scale lies between zero and one. If it is zero, there's no association between the variables. If it is one, then association between the variables is equal to 100%. So if you look at the total sum of scare and estimated sum of scare and residual sum of scare, as I said before, so the total sum of scare and residual sum of scare and estimated sum of scare. We just derive the formula of R scare. So I just start. So we know that total, that is total sum of scare. Total sum of scare is equal to estimated sum of scare plus residual sum of scare. So uh, this is total sum of scare. So how much variation of y by, from mean value? So this is our uh, residual sum of scare. This is our estimated sum of scare. So by, by dividing, Total sum of scale on both sides, then we can write it. it. Total sum of scale is equal to estimated sum of scale over total sum of scale plus a residual sum of scale over total sum of scale. So we can write it like over estimated sum of scale and a residual sum of scale over estimated sum of scale is equal to estimated sum of scare is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar whole scare over summation y i minus y bar whole scare so uh, plus Summation UI, that is residual sum of scale over total sum of scale. Summation YI minus Y hat over scale. So we can define R scale is equal to estimated sum of scale, but a total sum of scale. So we can write it as, we can write this equation as r square is equal to one minus summation u i square over y i minus y bar whole square that is equal to one minus residual sum of square over total sum of square so by this way we can calculate the value of r square that shows how much variation in your or dependent variable due to all explanatory variables. In if we have two variable case, then we can write it small r square. If we have multiple regression, then we can write it 
capital R scale that is coefficient determination how much variation in your dependent variable due to all explanatory variable as I said before uh, these uh, R scale have two properties one is uh, R scale is non-negative that lies between zero and one and uh, uh, that that can never be negative so if your uh, variation is 100 percent your uh, independent variable explain the dependent variable 100 percent then R, the value of R scale is equal to one if the uh, over independent variable and dependent variable don't have so much association then R scale is equal to zero so uh, this is all about the coefficient of determination so i hope uh, you can understand the values uh, or you can understand the basic concept of econometrics uh, in econometric topics